thank you very much for having me here for this last session on the ET healthcare. What I will be taking you through is how do we, we use technology to give a healthy singleton child to a couple in the shortest possible time. And I'll touch upon four aspects. How do you produce the best lab? How do we use QAQC to help us achieve this? How do you select the best embryo? How do you decide the optimal time of transfer? And how do we use technology for the purpose of education? For QAQC, you see, we have an indigenous application which we use across our clinics to see how good is the quality control. There are multiple parameters that we need to monitor, as has been mentioned in the earlier panel. These are the various equipments and instruments in one of the labs. Each incubator, each instrument, equipment, the temperature, the humidity, the VOCs, the air quality, everything needs to be monitored. So this is an app which gives you a graphical description of how each of the instrument in the lab is behaving. And as and when any of the parameters are out of range, there is an automated alert which goes to the manager of the lab telling him or her as to which parameter is out of range and what needs to be controlled. So this technology helps in maintaining the most stable atmosphere for the growth of the embryos. In addition, this also gives you a complete update on the maintenance that is required for the lab. What needs to be changed at what time? And you get a daily alert at 8 a.m. as to the activities required in the lab on that particular day in terms of active management. The second area where this has been used is to select the best quality embryo. Now there was a brief discussion on the use of the time-lapse technology. And let me take you through as to what it is and how do we use it. Now, conventionally, an embryo or is graded by removing it from the incubator at a fixed time post the egg retrieval. What is done in the time lapse is the embryos remain in the incubator, but they are photographed at periodic intervals so that you do not need to remove them to assess how the embryos are growing. So it is completely non-invasive. There is controlled and stable culture conditions as the embryo need not be removed and you can have 24-hour monitoring. But the question is, how does it actually help? These are the images of a particular embryo. The first is at 19 hours showing a 2 p.m. a normal fertilized egg. The second is at 44 hours showing a four cell embryo with less than 5% fragmentation. Third is at 68 hours showing a good eight cell embryo. And under the conventional grading, this would have been classified as a grade A embryo fit for embryo transfer. But let us see how the cell divides under time lapse. And this is, these are the images of the embryo dividing under the time lapse. Just see how the cell divides from one cell onwards. These are the two pronuclei. They fuse. And the cell divides from one cell to three cell. It goes back to two cell and then it divides into four cell. So this is an event which would have been completely missed out had the embryo been subjected only to the conventional monitoring. So this is what the time-lapse technology helps because you are pro having continuous monitoring. You can deselect a good-looking embryo which does not have the same implantation potential. Next is the role of PGT. Again, a brief discussion, but what does this do? This helps us in selecting embryos which are chromosomally abnormal and hence not fit for embryo transfer. As was mentioned earlier, it is primarily reserved for patients with advanced maternal age, repeated implantation failures, recurrent miscarriages, severe male factor, and with patients who have had a previous abnormal fact, uh, baby. And these are the results which show how a normal and an abnormal embryo looks, whether it has a monosomy or is it completely chaotic, showing multiple pluses or minuses in embryos. But does it actually help in improving the pregnancy rates? And these are the results of our study, which we have published looking at the Indian data on the effect of PGT on, based on the uh, maternal age. And you can see that the percentage of abnormal embryos increases from 60% to 85% as the age goes beyond 40. 
And this is one of the major reasons why these patients do not get pregnant in spite of having good looking embryos. So higher the age, the lesser the number of patients who will have at least one normal embryo to transfer. But if you have a normal embryo to transfer, then the pregnancy rates across all the age groups are relatively same. So this is a procedure which is basically helpful in uh, removing out good looking but aneuploid embryos which will not implant. The other use of this technique is in PGT, that is looking at uh, embryos for monogenic, uh, monogenic disorders. And this is an interesting concept of a severe sibling. If a child is affected by a monogenic disorder, common as being thalassemia major, you can also find, uh, create an embryo which is not only disease free, but is also HLA matched and that child will act as a savior or act as a donor for a bone marrow transplantation and not only be himself disease free, but will also give permanent cure to the previous sibling. And this is a case study where we did such a procedure. It takes close to around three months to create the embryos and eventually transfer the embryos. And we have just released India's first Savior sibling for a child who had thalassemia major, and now this child is nearly six months old, a 10 by 10 HLA match for that sibling. But you can see that out of the 18 embryos created out of three cycles, there was only one embryo which was normal, which implanted and gave rise to a live birth. So this is something else that technology is helping, not only in treating the women with their infertility problems, but also helping them cure diseases of their previous children. Once you have selected the best possible embryo, then how do you decide an optimal time to transfer the embryos? And there is this test called endometrial receptivity array, which helps us in finding the window of implantation in an infertile couple. The test tells us whether the endometrium is receptive when you intend to do the transfer, or is it non-receptive, in which case you would need to individualize the embryo transfer. Because even though we transfer embryos, at five days of progesterone therapy, in every patient, the window is not at five days. There could be a plus minus two day gap within which the endometrium could be receptive. And hence the challenge is to find out what is the optimal time. And this is a publication in patients having recurrent implantation failures with four previous IVF failed embryo transfer. The endometrium is pre-receptive in 60%, it is post-receptive in 40%. And in this difficult patients, if you do a personalized embryo transfer, you would still have a cumulative pregnancy rate in the range of 70%. And lastly is the use of technology in education, because as we want to grow and we have more and more clinics, how do we monitor and educate our embryologists? And this is where you can use, again, an application to see how the embryologists are scoring. And what you can give is online images of embryos or anything that you want. And you can ask the embryologist to grade them or to assess an answer. And this becomes a very important teaching tool as a part of a distant learning protocol when you have multiple people working at multiple locations. And you can see how well they are up to the task. So you have numerous technologies. And today, since success is measured as cumulative singleton live birth following a single cycle stimulation in the safest possible way and in the shortest possible time, we have all these technologies with us. We need to individualize and find out which technology should be offered to which couple so that they can fulfill their desire of having a single healthy child in the shortest possible time. I thank you all for your attention.